Welcome to Beam Basics video one with Miss Kim and Miss Kerry. Now, a lot of you guys have got beams at home, which is fantastic. So if you do, use your beam by all means. However, if you don't have a beam, you can still do this class. Uh, be creative. Think about anything that is flat and long that you can use as your beam. Really good option is masking tape. Bit of masking tape along the floor. Um, even two, if you want to make your beam wider, um, you absolutely can, you can do that. You don't need to stick to that tiny little um, length of, of tape. Uh, but be creative. Find something that you can use to practice your balance. So everything we are doing here can be done on the floor or elevated on a beam. As always, uh, please work at your skill level. Uh, don't feel like you have to do anything that you're not comfortable with yet. Um, and at the same time, if you're feeling really comfortable and you're having a really great day, go for it. Take some of the harder options where you feel it's suitable. Before we get started, we want to make sure we go through our five S's. So our first one is sanitize always. We want to put a little bit of sanitizer on our hands. Give it a good rub in all around our fingers, our wrists, our hands. Next up is space. So we want to make sure we have plenty of clear space around us so that we're not going to kick any furniture or run into any walls. Safety. Safety first at all times. Stick to your level of skill and, as I said, make sure you've got plenty of space around you. Sensible. We want to make sure we're not being silly. We want to follow our instructions and stick to what we can do. Finally is our soft surface. So. At home, obviously, you're not going to have the mats that we have here at the gym, so we're going to makeshift something for you. You can use some quilts, some blankets, some pillows, some cushions, uh, a spare mattress. We just don't want to be doing our gymnastics on a hard surface like tiles or brick or concrete. Once you've done your 5S check, it's ready to get started. Let's start by getting warmed up. So we're going to go continuously from one exercise to the next. Miss Kim's going to show you it one time through, but then we want you guys to pause and repeat it three times, please. So let's get started with our star jumps or jumping jacks. And we're going to do 10 of them off we go, Miss Kim. So we're going to get our heart rate up, start to warm up, particularly our feet, our calves, our ankles when we do our body work. Then we're going to go into our straight jumps. We're going to do 10 of those. Feet together, squeezing your bottom. Nice straight arms, no party arms. Then we're going to do our arm circles, so 10 forwards and 10 backwards. Remember with our arm circles, we want to keep our arms really straight. We want to rotate all the way through, so get those shoulder blades lifting and moving. So we're not just throwing our wrists around, it's the whole arms. That's it. Now as you get warmer, your circles will get bigger. Don't rush your circles, make sure you're taking your time to get really warm and stretched out. After this, we're going straight to our calf raises, so our feet will need to be together. Hands on your hips. If you've got a wall nearby, that's fine. You can hold on to that. And we're going to go up and down. And again, we don't want to rush it. So up and hold, down. Up and hold, down. Really important, particularly on the beam, that our calves are nice and strong, nice and warmed up. We do spend a lot of time up on our toes. Then we're going to go to our hip circle. So hands on hips. And you're going to try and draw a circle with your knee. So, working on our balance here, we're going to do 10 on each leg. So already, we're starting to get the ankle nice and warm, ready for the stability work that we need to do for beam. That's it. So Miss Kim's doing the right thing. She's got her eyes focused very strongly on something on the floor. All right, and that, that's going to always help your balance. If you're focused on an object that's not moving, Front of you, okay. If you're looking around everywhere, it gets hard and you're gonna fall over. When you're doing your hip circles, it's always good to feel out which side feels better, which side feels looser. If there's any tightness in there, if your balance is worse on one side as well, it's just got something good to know. Good job. So we want to do ten of these, six each side, and as I said. Pause the video, go back to the start, do everything again. So by the end you'll have done 30 reps of everything and you should feel nice and warm, ready to go. Welcome to Beam Basics number one. So this video is suitable for rec, for kinder gym, also for foundation.
foundations. Okay, so just because we start to do more advanced skills in the foundations and levels doesn't mean we don't need to go back to basics every now and then. Particularly at the moment where we don't have the big beams at home, we don't have a coach to help us with those harder skills, this is a perfect time to refine the basics. Yep. All right, improve your strength, improve your balance, all of these things so that when the gyms are back open again, we can come back in, it does make it a lot easier to start upskilling again. So we're going to start with our roads. Now we know how much you all love doing roads at the start of your class, but look at your Simone Biles of the world, okay? You cannot tell me that she does not do rows every single day. It's very important to repeat our basics over and over again. So, let's get started. Now, we remember our aeroplane arms. If we're in kinder gym, we still call them aeroplane arms. However, we also call them finish. Okay, so if we ever say to you, arms in finish, straight away we're talking about our arms are out nice and wide. They're slightly higher than shoulders. Okay, and we do our lovely gymnastics hands where we take our thumbs, turn them to the back. Okay, this engages the shoulder muscles a lot more. It looks pretty good too. <laughs> When we have our arms out on the beam as well, can you just turn to the front, Miss Beam? Uh, Miss Beam. <laughs> Miss Kim, she'll now be known as Miss Beam. All right, we want to see that tension from the fingertips right through to the shoulder. So we don't want straight, beautiful arms and floppy hands. Okay, we want to engage every muscle that we can so we reach as if we're trying to stretch out and touch the walls. Let's get started with our rows. So arms are in finish. We're going to start with walking forwards and our feet are flat. So remember, we still want to tap that beam. <laughs> See, we need to practice. So we still want to tap the beam as we step so that we don't need to look down. Our eyes should be looking forward all the time. So we can find a spot on the wall where you're walking to keep that eye gaze focused and take it back. That's it, so keep those legs nice and straight, pointing our toes, nice straight arms, always engaged through the core, through our belly. Now Miss Kim's not going to turn around, she's going to walk backwards. Our second row is backwards. So again, pointing toes, straight legs. We want to tap the beam behind us. This is how we know where the beam is before we step. If we just step our foot straight back, we might not know that the beam is right there. We might step off the side of the beam. So we want to always tap our foot behind first so that we can feel the beam. That's it. And we know where the end of the beam is because we can't feel it anymore. I'll turn around and back the walk again for me. And when you're walking along the beam, if you're wobbling, if you're feeling off balance, that's okay. Okay, that is absolutely okay. This is how we improve our balance. Big tip, breathe. <laughs> we always hold our breath when we're working hard on something. So when we're working hard in strength and in balance, we tend to hold our breath. So just try not to do that. <laughs> okay, let's do some sideways walking. So we're in our star shape, but our arms are in finish at that slight elevation. Again, tap the beam as we step. We want to see if we can keep our hips open and facing to the front. We don't want our hips to turn out to the side. Eyes forward, focusing our attention on the wall in front, not down on the floor. We don't want to be looking down. And back again, please, Miss Kim. That's it. We want to keep a nice long spine, neutral spine, we call it, where the back is straight right the way up to the crown. Our next row is our forward kicks. So we want our arms in finish. And step, kick, step, kick. Pointing our toes. So can we all make a real effort to focus on pointing our toes in our kicks? Because this looks much nicer than this. That's it. It also helps to engage more of the muscles in your legs. Strengthens your calves, which is super important on the beam. Alright, next we're going to do our back kicks. Now, the back kicks can be a little bit tricky because you have to really think about it. Alright, so you need to switch your brain on a little bit. We kick, then step. Kick, then step. That's 
the way. So again, we're tapping, make sure we know where the beam is, where the end of the beam is. Now you notice when you this kid is walking, she's not leaning forward as she kicks. Okay, we want you guys to keep your chest up. Keep it nice and open. Whoop. <laughs> Back again, please, Miss Kim. So you can see she's staying up. We're not worried about how high you're kicking. Okay? This is the beginning stage of learning to kick on the knee. So we're not concerned about how high that level is. We are concerned about your chest staying up, stay nice and open, and maintain the balance. Next up is our side kicks. Side kicks are those tricky, funny little ones that often you'll, you'll find yourself overbalancing on because we're taking the leg away from the midline of the body. So our arms are out and finish, our belly is switched on, and we're kicking out to the side. Okay, we're going to see those pointy toes, and we're trying to go straight out to the side. We're trying not to circle our leg around. We just want to go out and back in again. If you want to challenge, you can try doing those and stepping backwards. You can do side kicks. There's variations that you can do to challenge yourself, depending on how you're feeling today, what sort of level you're up to. Beautiful, and that is our rows. Looking at some of our beam skills, and these are our base skills for development for rec, again, kinder gym, and our foundation, and even our living skills. All right, we're gonna start with our releve walking forward. The releve simply means up on our toes. So we're up on the balls of our feet. Arms are out and finish. Legs nice and straight and walking along. And you don't have to always walk forwards. You can try it forwards, back and sideways. It's up to you um, how hard you want to make that. Our next one is our passe steps. So our passes are to prepare us for handstands on the beam. This is the very, very first part of the handstand on the beam. Our passe, we Take a step forward, lift our knee. So we want to try and get that knee up to our hip. You keep going, Miss Kim. So think about it as like a little triangle balance. We want to see that nice triangle shape. Our big toe comes next to our knee. Once we've held our triangle, we kick out, tap the beam, and step. Okay, so kinder gym, as you might know, this is our flamingo walk. Our flamingo arms and our beautiful flamingo legs. Next up, we're going to start to get you used to jumping. <laughs> so we're going to do our kangaroo jumps on the bed. Kangaroo jumps are just simple little hops along the beam, feet together. You can have your kangaroo paws out if you want. You can put your arms up if you want. You can have your arms in front. It's up to you. All we want is for you to be comfortable jumping on the bed. Okay, so we're going to go up and down, land in the same spot each time, and taking off and landing with our two feet, so no galloping. Next we do our bear walks. So first option is our feet on the floor and our hands on the bed. Okay, we're going to bear walk side to side. That's it. Go to your level. So if you can keep those legs straight then please do. If you can bounce a little bit more, go for it. If you're comfortable there then we can try our bear walk up on the bed. So this is going to challenge our balance a little more. It's also starting to get us used to being slightly inverted on the beam for our handstands. Next up is my favourite thing on the beam, the bunny hops. So we're going side to side over the beam. Hands go down and we jump both feet at the same time. So we don't want to jump one foot and then the other. We want to keep the feet together. Knees squeezing and we're jumping side to side over that beam. Okay, next we're going to try our relay hold. So, do you want to just come forward a little bit more, Miss Kim? There we go. So, our relay hold. So, remember what I said about relay? It simply means up on toes, okay, up on the balls of your feet. We're going to hold for 10 seconds if we can. All right, I want to see those arms up. So, show me that beautiful straight shape. And we're going to lift up. 10, 9, 8, Eyes forward, squeeze your bottom, keep your belly nice and tight, and squeeze those legs together. Three, two, one, and down. Have a little break and then do it again. So you can do your relevant holds as 
often as you like, just be aware that your calves will get a little bit tired from being up on your toes for that long. Alrighty, our jump up to motorbike. We all know how to jump off the beam. Yes? I'm pretty sure we do. I've seen a lot of you jumping off the beam. Do we run straight off the end of the beam? No, we do not. Do we get to the end and just kind of fall off of the beam? No, we definitely do not. We want to jump to our motorbike. So, Miss Kim, come stand next to me on the floor first. Our motorbike. You do not have to have your feet together, okay? You can have them slightly apart. This is very safe for your knees to be apart. Okay, our arms are out. These are our motorbike arms. Okay, so we're going to grab a hold of those motorbike handles. That's it. Knees bent, okay? This will absorb the impact. We do not lean forward. This will tip our motorbike over. We want to keep our chest up, shoulders back. Okay, so standing tall, motorbike. Stand tall, motorbike. Stand tall, motorbike. That's it. So every time we land from a jump, we want to land in motorbike, particularly from height. So Miss Kim is going to show us. We're going to walk to the end of the bed. Oops, we're in that. We stop at the end of the bed. Our feet are together. We're standing tall. We crack, arms out in front. Swing, big straight jump, and land in motorbike. That's it. Can you show me one more time, Miss Kim? So remember, when we jump off of the end of the beam, make sure you're jumping up. Don't just jump straight to the floor. Jump up nice and straight and then come down to the end of the beam. We stop, prep, swing, jump, motorbike. Beautiful. So that is something that you can practice at home. Jumping off of just little steps, you can do it practicing it just on the floor. You don't need to actually jump off of anything, but really super important to have safe landings. Alrighty, now we move on to our straight jump drill. Up we go, Miss Kim. So, our straight jump drill. We are not necessarily jumping, okay? <laughs> we are just preparing for a jump. We want to start nice and straight, obviously. <laughs> so we don't want to be leaning forward. We're not trying to jump as high as we possibly can. Be nice and tight, so standing tall. And we come to our prep. So when we prep, our arms are out and we're going to slightly bend our knees. We're going to swing our arms down and up and we hold and elevate. So you can see Miss Kim's ankles are together and her heels are lifted up. We're going to hold up there for one, two, three, and down. That was not the toy. <laughs> that was definitely longer than three seconds. So let's try that again. Standing tall. than the actual jump. Moving it onto the jump is not so hard once you feel comfortable being up there. So I want you guys to practice the hold, okay? Don't jump yet. We will look at jumping off the beam later on. But for now, get really strong holding because it's definitely the harder option, okay? Especially with a big, strong swing. The more you swing those arms, the more momentum you put into your body, the harder it is to then hold at the top there. So really challenge yourself. Our final activity, and this is for a little bit of fun, you're going to get yourself a ball and you're going to throw and catch that ball. Now, if you've got somebody else, like mum's here or your sister or brother, they can be throwing it to you. Now, it doesn't mean you have to stay in the same spot. <laughs> All right, so I want you to challenge yourself. Don't just throw it straight up and down, straight up and down. That's too easy. Make yourself have to move around on the beam to catch it. Now you might have to move forward, you might have to move backwards, you might have to go sideways, you might have to jump. <laughs> you can even get somebody to throw that ball to you as you dismount the beam. So jumping off of the beam, I'm going to throw the ball to Miss Kim and see if she can catch it. So she needs to do her straight jump. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Bouncing that ball to yourself if you buy yourself. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Throw it, catch it, pass it under your legs, or throw it again. Whatever you want to do, have a bit of fun, but stay on the beam. Alright, 
well done everybody. Now it's time for our cool down stretches. Let's start in our straddle position. Big wide legs, reaching for our toes. Let's count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Well done. And the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. Hands in the middle. Walk your fingers out as far as you can. This skin's not very flexible, but I'm sure you can get your fingers out a little bit further than I can. Beautiful. All right. Into your pike stretch and reaching for your toes. See if you can get your nose down to your knees. This kid needs to do more stretches. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Now into this position. We want our knee and our ankle on top of each other. In a straight line and we're going to just lean forward and stretch through our hips. Let's down to five. One, two, three, four, five. And changing legs. Other leg out in front. Remember your knee and your ankle are in a straight line. And we're leaning forward. One, two, three, four, five. Well done. All right, now for our runner's start. We want our foot down on the floor, close to our knee, and our hands down in front, and we're stretching our calf muscle. Our calf muscle is this muscle here, and in this case, we're stretching this calf muscle. So putting, pushing down. Five, four, three, two, one, and changing sides. Remember, keep that heel down, leaning slightly forward. Make sure your knee is close to your heel. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that felt good. All right. Hands down, up on your feet. Walk your hands back a little bit and see if you can get your heels down on the ground. Let's count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, well done, everybody. See you next time.